and the governor versus government showdown is back again in Kerala. And the latest, Kerala Governor Arif Khan's convoy was allegedly attacked by activists of the Students' Federation of India. High drama unfolded late last night when black flags were waved by SFI activists at the governor while he was on his way to the airport. Protesters also raised slogans saying, RSS governor go back, alleging that the governor was attempting to saffronize universities as part of RSS agenda. Some of the workers were also seen smashing the windows of the cars of the governor's convoy. First, take a look at how the events unfolded last night. Well, the Kerala governor has alleged that Chief Minister Pinrai Vijayan sent goons to hurt him physically. Khan has said that his vehicle was hit by hands with the members of the Students Federation of India protesting there. And this is after he was surrounded or his vehicle was surrounded by them on Monday. The governor has also accused the state police of colluding with them under the directions of the Chief Minister who happens to be the state Home Minister as well. Will they allow anybody to come near the car of the Chief Minister? And they were all sitting in a car, which means police knew what police poor people can do when the chief minister is directing them. Here the cars were standing there. And then the police people pushed them into their cars and they ran away from there. So it is chief minister, I'm saying it clearly, he is conspiring, he is sending these people to hurt me physically. Can it happen that the protesters will come sitting in, a, in police jeeps? Unless, unless Chief Minister, who is the Home Minister, is directing the whole thing? Is it possible? Sir, Kerala, it is the start of the collapse of constitutional machinery. The BJP is back to Kerala governor with the top leadership echoing the stance of the governor and alleging that the attack depicts the crumbling law and order situation in the left front state. Claiming that it was a democratic uh, black protest that they have. No, what democratic protest? Hitting the governor's car is a democratic protest. Is it democratic? Is it happens in any of the other states in India? It's happening in Kerala only. The SFI, DYFI, criminals unleashing violence and trying to manhandle against the honorable governor. The fact that he was attacked thrice during his travel from the Raj Bhavan to the airport, a distance of around 5 kilometers. And the fact that these people were let loose by the ruling front and police was made ineffective, it shows where the law and order situation has reached in Kerala. The opposition Congress has also interestingly waded into this government versus governor showdown. The grand old party has alleged that Arif Mohamed Khan is implementing RSS agenda in Kerala and both the governor and the Kerala government are responsible for the state's deteriorating law and order situation. However, they have said that action is taken against members of the KSU, but SFI members are let loose on a rampage in the state. I say it should be taken against the Chief Minister. The Honorable Governor is a head of the state, a delegation against the uh, Honorable Chief Minister. The detailed investigation should be conducted. The Kerala governments are totally collapsed. KSU Kairum, Road Arigil Nin, Mukhyamandri Gedrai, Karingudi Ganichal, Adi Atmahatia Skodu, Bigara Vadam, Tivara Vada Pravartanam, Avare Kayarinje. ஐயாரிஜேனம் हिंसा को बढ़ावा देने वाली कोई गतिविधि नहीं होनी जिस तरीके से केंद्र सरकार अपने राज्यपालों के माध्यम से चाहे केरल है या जहां जहां कांग्रेस शासित राज्य है वहां के विकास को रोक रही मैं उसकी कठोरतम शब्दों में निंदा करता हूं
The SFI, however, has refused to accept the charges against it and said that they only registered their protests when the governor's convoy passed by. CPM has also alleged that efforts were being made to suffragize Kerala universities as only people from the RSS, BJP and ABVP were being appointed to these universities. Alah, idul, nyangal deh, ajan deh lori katta tirum. Kaya kama itu lori akramanu, alanggilu, samaratin deh, ridi tu tetai bohun, alilai ke samaratu kundu wagen, nanti nanti nyangalu desi cetil lah. Jenadi bete berama itu tanne ayirikum nyangal deh, samarangal, ori darat tirul lah jenadi bete virudha eda bodelu mas samarangal deh bagatun da villa. You're watching the news hour at ten, debate number two on Times Now, Super Prime Time. Joining us on the broadcast are Rahul Ishwar, activist, Sarah Shahalim, writer and activist. Joining us from Kolkata, Adil Hassan, spokesperson of the MIM, is with us. Leader of the MIM, also with us is advocate, PPS Sagir, political analyst, Tuin Sina, Ishkran Bandari, and Vivek Shivastava continue with us from debate number one. Let me start with you first and foremost, Vivek Shivastava. And let me ask you this. Doesn't this raise some serious questions of what's happening as far as the law and order situation in the state of Kerala is concerned? Those pictures, certainly no state of the country, would they be acceptable? where you have people protesting. Protest is fine. It's absolutely acceptable in a democratic setup. But you can't start right. banging on the windows and the walls of any door right. or of any car. As is seen over there, what is the police doing is a question. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you that violence is a wrong thing and the protest should always be peaceful. And if uh, the governor's car or any other car, even if it is of a common citizen or man, it is being attacked, it is wrong. And, you know, it needs to be investigated and culprits need to be brought to the book that is very clear and and you know i mean there are no two thoughts about it however you know uh, i think the honorable governor of kerala is trying to take the mileage uh, out in a very wrong way when he is accusing the honorable chief minister of kerala i mean what is the need for mr pinaray vijayan to be getting these things this is the last thing uh, uh, the government wants we have already had a moral victory over the governor and his saffronization plans through the court the courts have already reprimanded the governor and said you have been holding the development of the stand of the state by holding on to the various bills for two years, two and a half years. The finance bill, he has been sitting on it for two and a half years. Money is not being allotted from the center to the Kerala government I'll come, to develop. I'll come to that. So I'll come to that. Budget, Vivek, Vivek, I'll come to that. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. I'll come to that point. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to shut you down. Please, let's go one by one. You're saying that why has the governor tried to milk this for publicity? Yeah. Let's go point by point and let Rahul Ishwar comment on this. Rahul Ishwar, Absolutely. is that a fair comment to make? Because here Vivek That's says that this is the governor Madhav. trying to milk the issue that has happened, the incident that has taken place. Madhav Dasi, governor is a very important post from Article 151 to 367. Specialities, powers and responsibilities are clearly defined for the governor. And Arif Muhammad Khan, sir, we all know he is a man of principle who sacrificed his post for for the principle he had. He is a person no, of no, great no. stature who is intervening in so many things. And please, sir, please, sir, please let me have my say. Let me have my say. I didn't back interrupt you, right? I didn't interrupt you. Please remember, Arif Mohammed Khan is not a you know rubber stamp governor. He actively intervenes. He takes up dowry cases. He takes up cases of he is a cleansing education in Kerala. He is a person that is who is intending to, to do some good for the society for the post he has. And remember physically attacking governor, attacking <laughs> his car. Is it right? Will Sri Pinrai Vijayan allow anyone to come near his car and attack like this? No, we said Will any wrong. leftist uh, we know, okay, we be okay with no, anybody no, we, attacking we our CM Pinrai Vijayan's car? It should not be done. But please remember, governor rightly it, pointed out that this principle. is a bad state of affairs. Vivekji, please have the patience Rahul, to listen. You principle. have heckled governor. This please unfair. don't Vivek, heckle Vivek, me. This is unfair. You have heckled no, governor. This is unfair, sir. This is unfair. Listen to the other side. So this Hold. Okay. Don't start heckling yes, one him. One submission. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you have heckled the honorable governor. Please don't yeah. heckle me. I'm a very common man. So please remember abusing governor, even physically intimidating governor, physically threatening governor. The same happened in a historical conclave where he was called all the bad words in the world. So please remember this is not right. If you ideologically oppose government, it is okay. Yeah. He is, you know, he is a person who can ideologically be that. Also saying it is violence, right. intimidation. Okay. Nobody has just tried. These are very Why bad. And this is very damaging. The, the Kerala I believe it. left should apologize. Just one line. I believe left should apologize to the governor. Left but you have a situation today. No, 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 Vivek. Why that is a pertinent question? Once again, Raul, now let me come. Now let me come. Vivek, let me ask you the question. Why this is important? Is that today you have a situation? where there yeah. are ministers in the Kerala cabinet who are yeah. giving SFI a clean sheet saying they should be congratulated. What would you say to those ministers? No, I mean, anybody who is saying it, 
I mean, I mean, no, no, no. I mean, Rahul Ishwar has not given me one single reason as to why the chief minister or his cabinet colleagues, as alleged by the governor, will, uh, uh, you know, orchestrate an attack on him. Give me one reason. Will you apologize? I want to know Will one reason from the BJP people or from Rahul Ishwar or from XYZ. Give me a reason. There is no reason. We are already having a moral victory of this governor who is a man with no principles. He is an RSS stooge. He is trying to change curriculum. He is trying to plant RSS people everywhere in the universities. Vivek, Vivek, And we will protest. I heard what Mr. Khan said. What did Mr. Arif Mohamed Khan say? He said that why was the police standing and allowing people to have access to my car, they would have been stopped if it was the chief minister and then they allowed him to get into a car and go away. The chief minister of Kerala happens to be the home minister of the, the state police, and that's a direct police. charge he's making. I have, first of all, he is trying to attack Mr. Penare Vijayan and the home minister of Kerala via his, his comments on the police, which are wrong and mischievous. He is making mischievous comments now. So Once why did the police he has allow been exposed access? by the court that he is an RSS him. stooge Vilaymi, trying to interfere in the education him. process. He is just trying to, you know, raise this police point. Okay, so let me bring in Sarah Shailim. Let me bring in Sarah Shailim. Totally Sarah Shailim, any defense, any defense or any response from your side as to why the police would allow any activist of any political persuasion so close to the governor's vehicle? Is that not a breach of security in your view? Yeah, so firstly, firstly, good evening, good evening, Madhav. See, protests of all kind have taken part in India. You know, let's go back to the freedom movement. And uh, we know it for a fact that none of the RSS people were part of the Indian freedom uh, movement to begin with. Now, we need to be very clear that to allege that he was attacked, you know, by, uh, you know, what he called the CM of uh, a great state like Kerala is very unbecoming of the governor because it's very clear that the activists of the Student Federation of India were clearly protesting in front of his car with black flags and the, the, the protest was duly controlled by the Kerala police and here the protest was attempts made by the governor to saffronize the Senate because he was busy trying to uh, you know, induct members of the Sang Parivar into the Senate, Senate of the state-funded universities. So here, I think it's a democratic right. There was no violence if you are using black flags to protest, uh, you know, in front of a car, because we won't have even uh, achieved Sarah freedom. Sarah Shahidim, the vehicle uh, was you know, the uh, apparently stopped and, uh, or accosted about three times uh, you know, the in the span of five kilometers. That's the information practice. coming in from there. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to get into the argument arguments of saffronization or not, that Tuhin Sina and uh, Ishkaran can get into and respond to you. But the point being made is, there can be a protest on ideological lines. Everyone's free to protest. How is thumping on the governor's car going to resolve anything? Or banging no, on the doors? I agree with you. See, Madhav, they, they have been, if you see, delays in considering uh, the bills waiting for the governor's assent. So there has been, you know, a, a tension between the state government and the governor because they are what you call problems from both sides of the fence. Here, mm. if you look at the state government, even they are waiting for certain bills to be passed. Okay. And they've been unduly stalled. Let Tuin come in on that. Tuin, the the panelists say that uh, I'm not. But before I get into the saffronization. They said that the Supreme Court has found substance in the argument of Kerala state that the governor behaved like an adversary by keeping eight key bills pending for two years before granting asset to one and referring seven to the president. That's the allegation that is there against the Kerala governor. To Insira. Madhav, all that is a distraction. Let me streamline it for you. The only problem that, you know, the... the existing state government of Kerala has with Arif Muhammad Khan is that both the Congress and the CPIM have made Kerala a hub of radicalization and Arif Muhammad Khan has been very vocal about civilizational and Indic issues. That is the only problem. He has, you know, caught the state government red-handed on certain issues of corruption. That is the issue. 
you know there are many many you know there are many instances when if the, the honorable governor is not in agreement or needs certain clarifications on a bill he has kept it pending so you know the supreme court is within its rights to make a judgment but the core issue over here is that he has stood against radicalization and i can give you multiple examples the kerala speaker referring to hamas as resistance fighters you know the the kerala government not not taking any action against a, a hamas leader who was called to to give a speech online you know we have seen instances of how iuml had taken out a procession some time back just 3 months back asking for slaughter of hindus okay arif mohammad khan has stood up against all of this and that is why he was attacked that is the core of the issue and we have we said this re repeatedly that the situation in kerala is quite alarming because of both the complicity advocate of the sagir party and the cpi advocate sagir the bjp is saying that because he has cracked down on radicalization is why there is such a response coming in from sfi your response to the bjp spokesperson to insan advocate sagir Mr. Simha ji, uh, you see that uh, in all India, the governor Raj is an attempt of RSS and BJP. C uh, can we forget the uh, C. V. Anand Bos of Bengal in Vishwabharati University? What has happened there? They have removed the name of Devendranath Tagore from the board, and instead they kept the board of Narendra Modi. and that is happening in bengal and what about the uh, governor in uh, anil baijal in no but does that justify uh, violence mr sagi do you agree with peer rajiv and others who are justifying saying that sfi should be congratulated tamil nadu everywhere it is there and uh, here you see the governor is appointed under article 155 then no mr sagi you are not answering my question article 19 Even article if that is the case hypothetically i agree with you does that justify this kind of violence Does that justify this, this kind of attack by the governor's staff? You see, you see, this is not a violence. This is only a, an idea of propagation against the Kerala governor, the government, and chief minister. So that it's normal. So it's normal for public to go and start thumping their hands on the governor's car. Yeah. That's perfectly yeah. fine. Man There is no They security breach. They just made slogans from the side of the road. Can anybody see in this video that whether any touching Mas to the governor's car? I couldn't see. Then uh, this is an Article 19 right. Well, like incidentally, it's the Congress which says that these are double that. standards. When KSU does this, they call suicide squads, terrorists, etc. But if, when if, CPM if and SFI suspect, workers, to be more specific, it. actually reach the vehicle, then they are allowed to do so by the police. What Congress is saying. But Ishkaran, please come in on the yeah. point that everywhere governors are acting against the governments. Hmm. This is an RSS agenda, he says. Madhav, can we focus on the topic? We are a nation which has lost two prime ministers and certain chief ministers to terror attacks, and we are having an odd hominem debate on what is the ideology of the governor. Forget whatever his ideology is. Forget if every decision of his is wrong, and you go to courts and you get relief against every decision he makes. Does that allow anybody to put his life at risk? Does it allow anybody to have a security breach of this type? Does it allow anybody to bang on his car? Was there an intelligence failure that people knew his route? How were they allowed to come so close to him? We are talking about a governor. He is a representation of the Indian government. He is a representation of the state. He is the head of the state, and we are having a security breach with him and discussing it on the grounds of his appointments in university, his decision on bills, whatever that may be. That may be legal. That may be not permissible as per Supreme Court. But his life cannot be put in risk, and we are having a debate justification of an attack on him, of an intelligence failure, of a security breach based on some bills he has passed or he is assented to or he is not assented to. Let us focus on what a grave security breach it was, and the risk it was it which he was put. He was incredibly brave that he came out and faced the hooligans. I wish he hadn't done that because when such hooligans are there, you do not know what weapons they are carrying. You do not know what is their mindset. You do not know what is their aim, and we cannot have such risk to the life of a governor, much less for such ridiculous reasons as what has he done on certain bills or not. Adil Hasan, Mr. Mr. Adil Hasan, I want Adil Hasan to come in on that. Adil Hasan, ideology ko chodiye. Is tarah ki hinsa kahi bhi acceptable hogi kya governor ko?
देखिए गवर्नर का जो वीडियो आप दिखा रहे हैं उस पर ऐसा कुछ नहीं है क्योंकि बीजेपी को गवर्नर साहब का टेन्योर खत्म हो रहा है उनको ये सब करने की आदत है उन्होंने फेमस हिस्टोरियन को इरफान हाथ मार रहे वो आपके हिसाब से गलत नहीं है नहीं नहीं ये सिर्फ नहीं सुनिए कुमार रवि इनका गवर्नर तमिलनाडु में तथागत किरण बेदी जो भी गवर्नर रहा है वो गवर्नर आर और बीजेपी का एजेंट बन के काम किया उसको बोलिए वो स्टेट प्रेसिडेंट बीजेपी का बन जाए आजिल हसन जी ऑल आर बीजेपी आजिल हसन जी आपको कहीं पे भी सुरक्षा की इसमें कहीं भी आपको थ्रेट नहीं दिख रही है अरे गाड़ी से उनपे अटैक हुई है उनपे अटैक हुई है और कह रहे हो गाड़ी से क्यों उतर रहे हैं कैसी बात कर रहे हैं आदिल हसन आदिल हसन थोड़ी सी लॉजिकल बात तो करिए आपके विवेक श्रीवास्तव भी हंस रहे हैं आपके आर्ग्यूमेंट पे या विवेक श्रीवास्तव लेफ्ट को सपोर्ट करते हैं वो भी आपकी बातों को सुन के हंस रहे हैं कि कैसी उठपटांग बातें कर रहे हैं आप आप नेशनल टेलीविजन पे हैं थोड़ा सा तो सोच के बोलिए आदिल हसन जी प्लीज राहुल राहुल ईश्वर राहुल ईश्वर राहुल ईश्वर This is very unfortunate and demeaning of using that particular word. To the honourable governor of Kerala, you are insulting Kerala. You are insulting my state. You are insulting Kerala. When you are calling the honourable governor that particular word, it is absolutely unacceptable. You disagree with him ideologically, no issue. You disagree with him on position, on issues. You are using a very offensive word on an honourable governor that is unacceptable and that should be withdrawn. He is a stubborn man on that post. He is not fit for that post. No, no, but Adil Hasan, Adil Hasan, Adil Hasan, you know why this is in bad taste? One second, one second. You can have your, you can, you can ideologically hate, deride whatever you feel from inside on any individual. That's your right. But you know, to a person who has just been attacked, you're calling that person a perpetrator of violence. I think you should withdraw that comment, Adil Hasan. I think you should withdraw that comment. No, no, Madam, listen to me. My leader, Barrister Hasan, who did what? Six bullets were shot at him in Uttar Pradesh. What Uttar Pradesh government was doing? My leader, Barrister Hasan. So it was widely covered. People have condemned that attack as well. Who can in his right mind condemn any act of violence in a democratic setup, Adil Hasan? Are you saying anybody justified that? Are you saying anybody justified that attack? What are you saying? You know. Governor is behaving like student union leader. All right, since 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 this is a reference to a BJP government, I'm going to allow Tuhin to come in. Tuhin, Madhav, it is. No, no, it is very amusing that, you know, now MIM will decide who's fit to be a governor or not, a party which, no, you know, con continuously the leaders decide. of whom talk against the, the constitution. Like anyway, governor. please keep quiet now. Like In fact, the present argument on your show, Madhav, the kind of argument that I am witnessing like on your show only reconfirms that Kerala needs a no, tough governor be like Ari Mohammad Khan. It reconfirms that that it needs a brave and tough governor against like Arif Mohammad Khan who can stand up to these bullies. These bullies who are spreading radicalization need a tough guy like Arif Mohammad Khan. And I'm so glad that you know the central government appointed him as the governor of of Kerala. Okay. Okay. Quick closing comment. Vivek Shri. Vastav, do you agree with what Adil Hasan is saying? Do you do you, do you think that's justified? See, because today, you know, you have a bizarre situation. No, all the Congress, is, the Congress is also is, opposed to Mr. Arif Ahmed Khan, but today no, they are no, saying all, what's been done by the act, SFI activists is wrong. Even the Congress is saying that. Yeah. Uh, see, we don't support we don't support violence, thumping of car or anything like that at any cost against the governor or any other common citizen. Also, we don't support it. That is very clear. You know, we are a democratic uh, setup, and we have to honor that up. However, we feel that the Honorable Governor of Kerala is an ambitious man, probably has his post-retirement yes. plans, oh, okay. trying to appease the Home Ministry and the Central Government All for right. future and promotions. We'll back to and that one on this debate. Vivek Srivastava, on that note, we'll have, to, we'll have to end this debate completely out of time. I'd like to thank you, as well as Sarah Shah Halim, Rahul Ishwar, Adil Hassan, Tuhin Sira, Ishkran Bandari and PPS Agir for joining us this evening. We'll have to see, of course, what finally comes out of this entire matter and how things finally come in place as far as the police investigation into what has happened as far as this attack on the governor's convoy is concerned. Thanks so much for joining us on the News Hour Agenda this evening. The News Hour at 10 will be right back after the break.